An active electronically scanned array AESA, is a type of phased array antenna, that is a computer-controlled array antenna in which the beam of radio waves can be electronically steered to point in different directions without moving the antenna. In the AESA, each antenna element is connected to a small solid-state transmit, receive module TRM, under the control of a computer, which performs the functions of a transmitter and or receiver for the antenna. This contrasts with a passive electronically scanned array PESA, in which all the antenna elements are connected to a single transmitter and or receiver through phase shifters under the control of the computer. AESA's main use is in radar, and these are known as Active Phased Array Radar The AESA is a more advanced, sophisticated, second generation of the original PESA phased array technology. PESAs can only emit a single beam of radio waves at a single frequency at a time. The AESA can radiate multiple beams of radio waves at multiple frequencies simultaneously. AESA radars can spread their signal emissions across a wider range of frequencies, which makes them more difficult to detect over background noise, allowing ships and aircraft to radiate powerful radar signals while still remaining stealthy. History Bell Labs proposed replacing the Nike Zeus radars with a phased array system in 1960, and was given the go-ahead for development in June 1961. The result was the Zeus Multifunction Array Radar ZMAR, an early example of an active electronically steered array radar system. ZMAR became MAR when the Zeus program ended in favor of the Nike X system in 1963. The MAR multifunction array radar was made of a large number of small antennas, each one connected to a separate computer-controlled transmitter or receiver. Using a variety of beamforming and signal processing steps, a single MAR was able to perform long-distance detection, track generation, discrimination of warheads from decoys, and tracking of the outbound interceptor missiles. MAR allowed the entire battle over a wide space to be controlled from a single site. Each MAR, and its associated battle center, would process tracks for hundreds of targets. The system would then select the most appropriate battery for each one, and hand off particular targets for them to attack. One battery would normally be associated with the MAR, while others would be distributed around it. Remote batteries were equipped with a much simpler radar whose primary purpose was to track the outgoing sprint missiles before they became visible to the potentially distant MAR. These smaller missile sight radars MSR were passively scanned, forming only a single beam instead of the MAR's multiple beams. The first Soviet APAR, the 5N65, was developed in 1963 to 1965 as a part of the S-225 ABM system. After some modifications in the system concept in 1967 it was built at Sari Shagan Test Range in 1970-1971 and nicknamed Flat Twin in the West. Four years later another radar of this design was built on Kura Test Range, while the S-225 system was never commissioned. The first military ground-based AESA was the J.FPS-3 which became fully operational with the 45th Aircraft Control and Warning Group of the Japan Self-Defense Forces in 1995. The first series production ship-based AESA was the OPS-24, a fire control radar introduced on the Japanese Asagiri-class destroyer DD-155 Hamagiri launched in 1988. The first airborne series production AESA was the L.M. 2075 Falcon on a Boeing 707 of the Chilean Air Force that entered service in 1994. The first AESA on a combat aircraft was the J.APG-1 introduced on the Mitsubishi F-2 in 1995. 
The first AESA on a missile is the seeker head for the AAM 4B, an air to air missile carried by the Mitsubishi F 2 and Mitsubishi built McDonnell Douglas F 15J. U.S. based manufacturers of the AESA radars used in the F 22 and Super Hornet include Northrop Grumman and Raytheon. These companies also design, develop and manufacture the transmit, receive modules which comprise the building blocks of an AESA radar. The requisite electronics technology was developed in-house via Department of Defense research programs such as MMIC program. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Basic concept Radar systems generally work by connecting an antenna to a powerful radio transmitter to emit a short pulse of signal. The transmitter is then disconnected and the antenna is connected to a sensitive receiver which amplifies any echoes from target objects. By measuring the time it takes for the signal to return, the radar receiver can determine the distance to the object. The receiver then sends the resulting output to a display of some sort. The transmitter elements were typically klystron tubes or magnetrons, which are suitable for amplifying or generating a narrow range of frequencies to high power levels. To scan a portion of the sky, the radar antenna must be physically moved to point in different directions. Starting in the 1960s new solid-state devices capable of delaying the transmitter signal in a controlled way were introduced. That led to the first practical large-scale passive electronically scanned array PESA, or simply phased array radar. PSAs took a signal from a single source, split it into hundreds of paths, selectively delayed some of them, and sent them to individual antennas. The radio signals from the separate antennas overlapped in space, and the interference patterns between the individual signals was controlled to reinforce the signal in certain directions, and mute it in all others. The delays could be easily controlled electronically, allowing the beam to be steered very quickly without moving the antenna. A PESA can scan a volume of space much quicker than a traditional mechanical system. Additionally, thanks to progress in electronics, PSAs added the ability to produce several active beams, allowing them to continue scanning the sky while at the same time focusing smaller beams on certain targets for tracking or guiding semi-active radar homing missiles. PSAs quickly became widespread on ships and large fixed emplacements in the 1960s, followed by airborne sensors as the electronics shrank. AESAs are the result of further developments in solid-state electronics. In earlier systems the transmitted signal was originally created in a klystron or traveling wave tube or similar device, which are relatively large. Receiver electronics were also large due to the high frequencies that they worked with. The introduction of gallium arsenide microelectronics through the 1980s served to greatly reduce the size of the receiver elements, until effective ones could be built at sizes similar to those of handheld radios, only a few cubic centimeters in volume. The introduction of JFETs and MESFETs did the same to the transmitter side of the systems as well. It gave rise to amplifier transmitters with a low-power solid-state waveform generator feeding an amplifier, allowing any radar so equipped to transmit on a much wider range of frequencies, to the point of changing operating frequency with every pulse sent out. Shrinking the entire assembly the transmitter, receiver and antenna into a single transmitter-receiver module. TRM about the size of a carton of milk and arraying these elements produces an AESA. The primary advantage of an AESA over a PESA is capability of the different modules to operate on different frequencies. Unlike the PESA, where the signal is generated at single frequencies by a small number of transmitters, in the AESA each module generates and radiates its own independent signal. This allows the AESA to produce numerous simultaneous sub-beams, 
that it can recognize due to different frequencies, and actively track a much larger number of targets. AESAs can also produce beams that consist of many different frequencies at once, using post-processing of the combined signal from a number of TRMs to re-create a display as if there was a single powerful beam being sent. However, this means that the noise present in each frequency is also received and added. Topic: <laughs> Advantages. AESAs add many capabilities of their own to those of the PESAs. Among these are, the ability to form multiple beams simultaneously, to use groups of TRMs for different roles concurrently, like radar detection, and, more importantly, their multiple simultaneous beams and scanning frequencies create difficulties for traditional, correlation-type radar detectors. Topic. Low probability of intercept Radar systems work by sending out a signal and then listening for its echo off distant objects. Each of these paths, to and from the target, is subject to the inverse square law of propagation in both the transmitted signal and the signal reflected back. That means that a radar's received energy drops with the fourth power of the distance, which is why radar systems require high powers, often in the megawatt range, to be effective at long range. The radar signal being sent out is a simple radio signal, and can be received with a simple radio receiver. Military aircraft and ships have defensive receivers, called radar warning receivers. RWR, which detect when an enemy radar beam is on them, thus revealing the position of the enemy. Unlike the radar unit, which must send the pulse out and then receive its reflection, the target's receiver does not need the reflection and thus the signal drops off only as the square of distance. This means that the receiver is always at an advantage neglecting disparity in antenna size over the radar in terms of range, it will always be able to detect the signal long before the radar can see the target's echo. Since the position of the radar is extremely useful information in an attack on that platform, this means that radars generally must be turned off for lengthy periods if they are subject to attack, this is common on ships, for instance. Unlike the radar, which knows which direction it is sending its signal, the receiver simply gets a pulse of energy and has to interpret it. Since the radio spectrum is filled with noise, the receiver's signal is integrated over a short period of time, making periodic sources like a radar add up and stand out over the random background. The rough direction can be calculated using a rotating antenna, or similar passive array using phase or amplitude comparison. Typically RWRs store the detected pulses for a short period of time, and compare the broadcast frequency and pulse repetition frequency against a database of known radars. The direction to the source is normally combined with symbology indicating the likely purpose of the radar, airborne early warning and control, surface-to-air missile, etc. This technique is much less useful against a radar with a frequency agile solid state transmitter. Since the AESA or PESA can change its frequency with every pulse except when using Doppler filtering, and generally does so using a random sequence, integrating over time does not help pull the signal out of the background noise. Moreover, a radar may be designed to extend the duration of the pulse and lower its peak power. An AESA or modern PESA will often have the capability to alter these parameters during operation. This makes no difference to the total energy reflected by the target but makes the detection of the pulse by an RWR system less likely. Nor does the AESA have any sort of fixed pulse repetition frequency, which can also be varied and thus hide any periodic brightening across the entire spectrum. Older generation RWRs are essentially useless against AESA radars, which is why AESAs are also known as low probability of intercept radars. 
Modern RWRs must be made highly sensitive, small angles and bandwidths for individual antennas, low transmission loss and noise, and add successive pulses through time frequency processing to achieve useful detection rates. Topic: <laughs> High jamming resistance. Jamming is likewise much more difficult against an AESA. Traditionally, jammers have operated by determining the operating frequency of the radar and then broadcasting a signal on it to confuse the receiver as to which is the real pulse and which is the jammers. This technique works as long as the radar system cannot easily change its operating frequency. When the transmitters were based on klystron tubes this was generally true, and radars, especially airborne ones, had only a few frequencies to choose among. A jammer could listen to those possible frequencies and select the one to be used to jam. Most radars using modern electronics are capable of changing their operating frequency with every pulse. This can make jamming less effective, although it is possible to send out broadband white noise to conduct barrage jamming against all the possible frequencies, this reduces the amount of jammer energy in any one frequency. An AESA has the additional capability of spreading its frequencies across a wide band even in a single pulse, a technique known as a chirp. In this case, the jamming will be the same frequency as the radar for only a short period, while the rest of the radar pulse is unjammed. AESAs can also be switched to a receive-only mode, and use these powerful jamming signals to track its source, something that required a separate receiver in older platforms. By integrating received signals from the target's own radar along with a lower rate of data from its own broadcasts, a detection system with a precise RWR like an AESA can generate more data with less energy. Some received beamforming capable systems, usually ground-based, may even discard a transmitter entirely. However, using a single receiving antenna only gives a direction. Obtaining a range and a target vector requires at least two physically separate passive devices for triangulation to provide instantaneous determinations, unless phase interferometry is used. Target motion analysis can estimate these quantities by incorporating many directional measurements over time, along with knowledge of the position of the receiver and constraints on the possible motion of the target. Other advantages Since each element in an AESA is a powerful radio receiver, active arrays have many roles besides traditional radar. One use is to dedicate several of the elements to reception of common radar signals, eliminating the need for a separate radar warning receiver. The same basic concept can be used to provide traditional radio support, and with some elements also broadcasting, form a very high bandwidth data link. The F-35 uses this mechanism to send sensor data between aircraft in order to provide a synthetic picture of higher resolution and range than any one radar could generate. In 2007, tests by Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, and L3 Communications enabled the AESA system of a Raptor to act like a Wi-Fi access point, able to transmit data at 548 megabits per second and receive at gigabit speed. This is far faster than the Link 16 system used by US and Allied aircraft, which transfers data at just over 1 megabit per second. To achieve these high data rates requires a highly directional antenna which AESA provides but which precludes reception by other units not within the antenna's beamwidth, whereas like most Wi-Fi designs, Link 16 transmits its signal omni-directionally to ensure all units within range can receive the data. AESAs are also much more reliable than either a PESA or older designs. Since each module operates independently of the others, single failures have little effect on the operation of the system as a whole. 
Additionally, the modules individually operate at low powers, perhaps 40 to 60 watts, so the need for a large high voltage power supply is eliminated. Replacing a mechanically scanned array with a fixed AESA mount such as on the Boeing F/A18E F Super Hornet can help reduce an aircraft's overall radar cross-section RCS, but some designs such as the Eurofighter Typhoon forego this advantage in order to combine mechanical scanning with electronic scanning and provide a wider angle of total coverage. This high off-nose pointing allows the AESA-equipped fighter to employ a crossing the T-maneuver, often referred to as beaming in the context of air-to-air -air combat, against a mechanically scanned radar that would filter out the low closing speed of the perpendicular flight as ground clutter while the AESA swivels 40 degrees towards the target in order to keep it within the AESA's 60-degree off-angle limit. Topic. Limitations With a half-wavelength distance between the elements, the maximum beam angle is approximately plus or minus 45 degree. With a shorter element distance, the highest field of view FOV for a flat phased array antenna is currently 120 degrees plus or minus 60 display style PM60 degree, although this can be combined with mechanical steering as noted above. Topic List of existing systems Topic Airborne systems Northrop Grumman AN, APG-77, for the F-22 Raptor AN, APG-80, for the F-16E, F Desert Falcon AN, APG-81, for the F-35 Lightning II AN, APG-83 SABR, for the F-16V Viper and B-1B Lancer upgrades AN, AP-9, for the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Multirol AESA, for the Boeing Wedgetail AEW and C AN, A ASQ-236 Podded AESA Radar and ZPY-1 Starlight Small Tactical Radar, Lightweight, for manned and unmanned aircraft and ZPY-2 Multi-Platform Radar Technology Insertion Program and ZPY-3 Multi-Function Active Sensor for MQ-4C Triton Vehicle Dismount and Exploitation Radar Vader Raytheon and APG-63 V-2 and an APG-63 V-3, for the F-15C Eagle, Republic of Singapore's F-15SG and APG-79, for the F-A-18E, F Super Hornet and EA-18G Growler and APG-82 V-1 for the F-15E Strike Eagle and APQ-181 Upgrade from PESA to AESA, for Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit Bomber RACR Raytheon Advanced Combat Radar A AES Advanced Airborne Sensor AESA follow-on to the Littoral Surveillance Radar System LSRS, APS-149 also built by Raytheon, for the Boeing P-8 Poseidon Raytheon Sentinel Aster Airborne Standoff Radar Captor E. Caesar Captor Active Electronically Scanning Array Radar for the Eurofighter Typhoon Celex S now Leonardo Picosa Raven ES-05 AESA for the JAS-39E Gripen Ing Sea Spray 5000E Sea Spray 7000E, for helicopters Sea Spray 7500E for General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper Vixen 500E Vixen 1000E Mitsubishi Electric Corporation J, APG-1, J, APG-2 AESA for the Mitsubishi F-2 Fighter HPS-104 for the Mitsubishi SH-60 Multifunction RF Sensor for Mitsubishi ATD Exhales RBE-2 AESA for Rafale Fighter Toshiba HPS-106, Air and Surface Search Radar, for the Kawasaki P-1 Maritime Patrol Aircraft, four antenna arrays. Ericsson Era IAEW and CPS-05, a MK-5 for Jazz-39 Gripen. EMB-145 AEW and C Saab Global AAEW and C, advanced version of the Era I with extended range. 
Phasotron NIIR Zhuk Air, for MiG 35 Tikomirov NIIP NO36 Belka, for Sukhoi Su 57 Elta L, M2083 Aerostat mounted air search radar L, M2052, for fighters. Interim candidate for HAL Tekus. Also, suitable for F-15, MiG-29 and Mirage 2000 L, M2075 radar for the IAI Falcon AEW and C system L, W2085 advanced version of the radar for the L, M2075, used on the Gulfstream G-550 L, W2090 similar to the L, W2085, only used on the Aleutian IL-76 NRIET Nanjing Research Institute Institute of Electronic Technology, 14 Institute, 607 Institute, and 38 Institute KJ-2000 AEW and C system radar for KJ-500 and Y7AWACS KJ-200 ZDK-03 Chengdu J-20 Type 1475 radar Chengdu J-10BZ-8 AEW DRDO DRDO LSTAR, radar for airborne early warning platform. Utam AESA multifunction radar for HAL Tekus Vega Radio Engineering Corporation, Vega Premier Surface systems land, maritime The first AESA radar employed on an operational warship was the Japanese Ops 24 manufactured by Mitsubishi Electric introduced on the JDS Hamagiri DD-155, the first ship of the latter batch of the Asagiri-class destroyer, launched in 1988. APAR Active Phased Array Radar, Thales Netherlands Multifunction Radar is the primary sensor of the Royal Netherlands Navy's De Zeven Provincian class frigates, the German Navy's Saxon class frigates, and the Royal Danish Navy's Eva Huitfeldt class frigates. APAR is the first active electronically scanned array multifunction radar employed on an operational warship. Bur, Bodenüberwachungsradar by Cassidian, for the Bundeswehr Cassidian TRS-4D Cobra Counter Battery Radar China Road Mobile Anti-Stealth JY-26 Skywatch U 3D Long Range Air Surveillance Radar H LJG-346-8 on Chinese aircraft carrier Liaoning H LJG346 on Type 052 C destroyer. H LJG346A on Type 052 D destroyer. H LJG346B on Type 055 destroyer. Type 305A radar acquisition radar for the HQ9 missile system. YLC2 radar. Elta. LM2080 Green Pine Ground based early warning AESA radar LM2106 ATAR air defense fire control radar LM2180 Watcher Guard multi mode staring ground surveillance radar LM2248 MF Star multifunction naval radar LM2258 Advanced Lightweight Phased Array Alpha Multifunction Naval Radar LM2084 Multimission Radar Artillery Weapon Location, Air Defense and Fire Control LM2133 Windguard, Trophy Active Protection System Radar Lockheed Martin and TPQ-53 Counterfire Target Acquisition Radar Northrop Grumman and TPS-80 Ground, Air Task Oriented Radar G, ATOR, HAMMR Highly Adaptable Multi-Mission Radar RADA Electronic INDUSTRIES RPS-10 RPS-15 RPS-40 RPS-42 RHS-44 Raytheon Flexstar Flexible Distributed Array Radar U.S. National Missile Defense Sea-based X-Band Radar XBR, 
AN, SPY-3 multifunction radar for USDD-X and CVN-21 next-generation surface vessels AN, SPY-6 multifunction radar for U.S. Arleigh Burke destroyers TPY-2 anti-ballistic missile radar that can stand alone or be a part of the THAAD-ABM system Dual-band radar for U.S. Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carrier and Zumwalt-class destroyer next-generation surface vessels Cobra Judy replacement CJR, Cobra King on USNS Howard O. Lorenzen, TAGM-25 and FPS-132 upgraded early warning radar UEWR, PAVE pause upgrade from PESA to AESA 3DLRR3 Dimensional Expeditionary Long Range Radar Curve Saab Group Giraffe Radar, Giraffe 1X Giraffe 4A, Giraffe 8A Selex S Kronos Land and Naval 3D Multifunction Radar RAN 40L 3D EWR RAT 31D LR8031DL M Thales Raytheon Systems Groundmaster 200 Groundmaster 400M3R Thales C Fire 500 on FREMMR frigates C Master 400 C Watcher 100 Mitsubishi Electric Corporation Type 3 Chu Sam Medium Range Surface to Air Missile System Chu Sam Sam 4 Multifunction Radar Ops 24 The world's first naval active electronically scanned array radar on Asagi class destroyers, Murasame class destroyer 1994 and Takanami class destroyers Ops 50 FCS3 on the Hyuga class helicopter destroyer, Izumo class helicopter destroyer and Akazuki class destroyer 2010 J FPS3 Japanese main ground based air defense J FPS5 Japanese ground based next generation missile defense radar JTPSP14 transportable air defense radar J TPSP-16 Firefinder Radar Toshiba J, FPS-4 Cheaper Than J, FPS-3, produced by Toshiba J MPQP-13 Counter Battery Radar, Toshiba MEADS's Fire Control Radar Thard System Fire Control Radar Bay Systems Insight Sampson Multifunction Radar for UK Type 45 Destroyers J, TPS-102 Self-Propelled Ground-Based Radar, Cylindrical Array Antenna, NECCEA Technologies A fourth generation multifunction digital active phased array radar, installed on HMAS Perth and to be installed on all ANZAC class frigates. NNIIRT 1L119 Nebo SVU Mobile AESA 3 Dimensional Surveillance Radar VNIIRT Gamma de Mobile 3 Dimensional Solid State AESA Surveillance Radar 50N6A Multifunctional Radar of the Vichaz Missile System and 42S6 Morphe Morpheus Multifunction Radar of the Kilometer SAM DRDO Arudra Radar Multifunction AESA Radar used by Indian Air Force Swordfish Long Range Tracking Radar Target Acquisition and Fire Control Radar for the Ballistic Missile Defense System. Bell Barrett Electronics Limited RAWL03 Multifunction Active Phased Array Air Surveillance Radar. Naval Missile Defense Radar NMDR S-band Multifunction Active Phased Array Radar. Topic See also Radar configurations and types Receiver Passive electronically scanned array Low probability of intercept radar <laughs>